Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 20. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 20 I was flying through the clouds. I felt my entire body free and loosen in space. I looked down and saw a city. I couldn't quite recognize it. I start to go down. And as I descend, city starts changing into a well-known landscape, Ols Park. I hit the ground and feel the grass underneath my feet. Everything was calm. Then I start walking. I instinctively worried about the screams that could be forthcoming. Then I began to hear music. It sounded familiar, light, tranquil. They were the chants from the Amaranija. I keep walking looking for the music. I go by a small hill and then see Tihi Aborigine event. I approach them. And as I get close, I realize they are not the Aborigines, but American soldiers. They are wearing several different types of uniforms from many different times. It was Ols Park's Amaranija. I get close to the altar and look at the corpse that, to my surprise, is mine. Then, all of a sudden, I am flying up in the sky again. I was flying higher and higher without a stop. What a great feeling. Wake up, sir. Please, fasten your seatbelt for we will landing shortly, I looked at and the stewardess. She was standing right in front of me, asking what my name was. I said. My name is Joe, she smiled and said. Everything's fine, Joe. Buckle up now. I fastened my seatbelt. I could hardly wait to get home. I felt weird. I spent almost six months away from home. I missed Thanksgiving and Christmas. I only sent one letter home and made one phone call before leaving Australia. But only now that I was arriving back home I missed them. I began remembering how they were, dad, mom, and my nephew, whose name I didn't even know what it was, and even Wayne, my brother-in-law. Everybody seemed to do part of a world that I didn't know anymore. A distant place, which I vaguely remembered. The airplane lands and parks at Boston Airport. I proceeded toward the front door. All my actions seemed natural. I felt more or less as if I was in a dream. My head still had a lot of doubts. But there was also the certainty that they would be answered in a given time. I got off the plane and I went through customs. It was standing at the exit gate when I saw them. They were a group of four well-known people that time and changes made look different to me now. Dad discreetly smiled at me. Mom saw me as the son who was gone and finally returned home, a discreet tear rolled down her face. And then there was Anne, with a wide smile on her face and holding in her arms the fourth person, my nephew Joseph. I could not believe how good I felt to see those people again. It was a simple and yet immense pleasure. Oh Joe. How nice to have you back with us. I missed you so much. Me too, Mom. It is good to be back as well. She held me with very tight. Welcome, Joseph. That had not changed. He shook hands with me as usual. E. That. It is good to see you too. We missed you, Big J. I want you to meet the little J. I looked at that little baby and felt renewed. Did you name him after me? Yes, I did. I didn't find any better name. Her disdain was naturally phony. She gave me a kiss and the baby so I could hold it. It was wonderful to feel that warm little body in my arms. And what about Wayne? He is working. Didn't he care to name the baby after his brother-in-law? Not at all. He likes Joseph. We both laughed. Then Dad came up to us. We'd better get going. You'll talk some more back home. We grabbed my suitcases and and took the baby back. We were walking toward the exit. Eddie and Rana called. They said that could not come. And's information contained a certain tone of grief, but I felt that was unnecessary. I knew that those two special people would still be part of my life, but it would be different. However, at that moment, together with my family, I felt I was finally at home. I felt well near them as I hadn't felt for the longest time. From that point on, my path became a sequence of simple moments, along with personal and professional accomplishments that always counted on the support and presence of those people I loved and admired so much. Like the Aborigines, I learned to value what I have close to me. With a good fortune that only few people have, I could revisit everything I'd learn and feel my moments, one at a time. Some sort of transcendental maturity had taken over my actions. From now on, I knew I'd really go all the way till the very end. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. 
Bye. Thank <laughs> you.